Uh, well, first of all, I just wanted to uh, thank JD and uh, Alana and Darcy and Kristen uh, and the entire NAS Dazer crew uh, for making tonight possible. Um, and also thank you to the other speakers um, and for all of you here and all those of you live streaming uh, back in California and beyond uh, for making this an engaging evening. When is the last time you looked at the sky for an hour? Stepping out into the raw of nature, you slow down. Your eyes and ears are open to the subtleties of the environment. The shifting sand, the undulating shadow, the changing gradient of the sky. I'm interested in creating art installations that directly use and engage the light, scale, transformation, and beauty of the natural environment. By doing so, I believe that I'm tapping into a universal beauty that is common amongst all of us, regardless of age, gender, race, or religion. Through this idea of universal beauty and engagement with the environment, I am interested in uncovering the commonalities of perception and emotion that exist amongst all of us as human beings. There's a reason why we feel the need to stop, uh, to stop in our tracks and to take in an incredible sunset or call someone to step out of the house so that they don't miss it. There's a reason why in a room full of Mark Rothko paintings, everyone is standing in front of that one painting. There's a complex layering of information and experience that moves all of us universally as human beings to stop and to look. Within our daily frenetic technology rich lives, I believe that we desire these kinds of tactile, universally beautiful moments. We are all looking to be part of experiences that create memory worth remembering. While the acquisition of objects and things are temporarily satisfying, it's these big, bold, beautiful, tactile moments that we hold as markers in our lives. Memories that we define as significant and altering, allowing us to shift our perception from that point forward. As an artist, my medium is light. This may be projected light, reflected light, colored light, or interaction with the sun via light and shadow. <clears throat> I use mirrored surfaces, acrylic, fiberglass, LED lighting, and many other materials to achieve a perceptual experience with light. Sometimes at an identifiable, oh, excuse me. Um, the other additive in my work is change, uh, that elements are shifting directly in front of you sometimes at an identifiable pace and sometimes at an almost imperceptible pace. Sometimes the pace of change is defined by the movement of the sun over the course of the day or defined via a process where I paint with light using time via digital software. Since late 2013, I have completed five large-scale outdoor temporary installations that directly engage with this idea of universal beauty via light and change, but with the addition of the surrounding environment used as material itself within the work. So this evening, I'm gonna share three of these installations. Lucid Stead, Reflection Field, and The Circle of Land and Sky. So Lucid Stead is uh, really a collaboration with a 70-year-old shack on my five acres in Joshua Tree. This is what it looked like for years until really the concept was to essentially erase half of it. And perhaps by erasing half of it, it would actually become more prominent within the landscape. But what's happening is that really your brain is sort of existing in a state of knowing and not knowing. You sort of understand what's happening, yet there's something in front of you, in front of you that's maybe mysterious. So you can see here as that sun and that shadow is moving around the piece, there's moments where it appears as though maybe that wood is just hovering. Other moments really as you interact with the piece and move through the desert and around it, you're becoming equally aware of the shack as you are the environment itself. Is there glass in that window? Are you looking directly through it? The horizon lines appear to be matching up. The shadows on the mountains are the same. But the reality is that's reflecting the mountains behind you. What starts happening is that your brain wants to adapt. It wants to try to make sense of what's happening. And as you get closer and closer to these reflective surfaces, it really begins to question, really, which side are you on? Uh, what's real? 
I, I will say I was the guy that spent a lot of time late into the evening, three inches away from these mirrors, trying to understand what was happening. <clears throat> but what's incredible about this project is that surrounding you the entire time is this expanse of the desert and the reality of the place. <clears throat> what are the dimensions of this installation? The shack itself, or really from that mountain range to that mountain range, the horizon line to the horizon line? As dusk would come, the lights would begin to slowly come up. White light on the inside, colored light through the four windows in the doorway. There was this beautiful moment at dusk where the colors of that sunset began to merge with the colors that were emanating through these four windows in the doorway. And in fact, there was a specific moment that happened at dawn and dusk where the light was balanced between what was emanating from this light box and the light of the environment. What would happen is that you would be reflected as purple, but the creosote bushes would still be reflected as green and the sky would still be reflected as blue. It was an amazing moment. As the sun continued to move down, really the colors began to be more saturated, the reflective qualities began to diminish, and you ended with these four fields of color that were just floating in the sky. So Reflection Field was created for the Coachella Valley Music and Arts Festival, Coachella Fest or Coachella, the big massive fest that maybe uh, some of you know about in Indio, California. This project happened just six months after Lucid Stead, so I was really sort of within the mindset of the shack. And what I wanted to do was to expand that moment when I saw myself as purple. I wanted now to make this a massive, immersive experience. So the four windows in the doorway of Lucid Stead were removed from the shack, removed from Joshua Tree, were blown up three times, and uh, now are these massive sort of uh, massive reflective prisms of the environment. <clears throat> as the sun would slowly shift up, you know, it was just, it was an amazing moment to be on the field before 100,000 people were there, um, and to sort of see it within its purity. But as the clouds were shifting and moving from one direction to the other, they'd be reflected, shifting the other way, shifting the other way, reflected off of surface, off of surface. As the colors of the sunset began to emerge, Again, those violets, the purples, the blues, reflecting off of each other and sort of recollaging the space and the environment. But like Lucid Stead, at dusk, those full fields of color would begin to emerge and you'd see these tinted views of that surrounding environment. But you could step up now to this purple volume, for instance, and that window you stood in front of Lucid Stead well, now it's 20 feet long and it's 14 feet high and it's extending beyond your periphery. Because of the scale of this, we were able to play with gradients where I could paint the ground pink and then fade it into the true colors of the sky. And as you move through the work and really began to discover different spaces within it, it was such a different experience during, during the day than it was at night. Here's a moment where you're actually looking at the side, just regular mirror unlit but it appears as though now this four foot thick volume is now maybe materialist and ultra thin and floating and it looks like there's a space that I can walk into. But all the while, all of this is really energized and activated by 100,000 people moving through this work, which really is kind of an unprecedented volume of people around an artwork over just three days. The Circle of Land and Sky uh, was created for the uh, inaugural Desert X um, that happened in the Coachella Valley in Southern California. It's essentially a museum without walls. There were 16 artists internationally that were invited to create large-scale installations that were up for two months in the Coachella Valley. Um, I also will just interrupt and say thank you, Issues, for putting the project on the cover. It was a nice, uh, a nice honor. <clears throat> So the installation is a 165-foot diameter circle that is composed of 300 reflectors that are all 10-foot high, and they're all angled at 10 degrees. The result is that as you are approaching the piece, all that is reflected is the land, and as you step into the interior of the work, all that's reflected is the sky. So it's really this kind of immersive, reflective experience. And again, 
again, uh, sort of as the environment is shifting, so the piece is shifting. As that sky is moving, the clouds are moving and changing colors, so the piece is picking up on all the subtleties of that pace of change within the desert. Here's shown at sunrise as those beautiful pinks are beginning to wrap and ring all of this mirror polished stainless steel. But then as the sun would lift up over the mountains, there was this incredible kind of line work that would begin to be placed across the ground of shadow and reflection. In fact, for every reflector, there was one blade of shadow and two blades of reflection. And you can imagine all of this slowly shifting. We have a time-lapse vi video that will be coming out in probably about a month or so that will really begin to showcase the quality of that. But here seen from above through a drone is this kind of line drawing that I'm saying of shadow and reflection. As you approach the piece up close, it almost had kind of a glassy experience and really began to recollage, reconfigure that surrounding environment. Here from a distance, you're sort of looking through it. Then it begins to reflect what's behind you to where all the way on the right-hand side, it's almost, you know, what, what am I looking at? Am I looking through it? Is that what's behind me? What's happening? So the piece really was incorporating reflection, light and shadow, and this pace of change. <clears throat> As the clouds began to move, just like in reflection field, so they began to be reflected across the surface. As the colors of the sunset began to emerge, you began to compress the colors of the east with the colors of the west. There were even very sort of abstract moments using the palette of the sky, then with the kind of line work of the reflection of the other reflectors that are uh, 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 showing the colors of that eastern sky, those kind of deep blues and purples. So again, though, in the full evening, as it again began to be very, very dark, and there was just sort of that, that uh, subtle light within the sky, there was a beautiful contrast between the very dark silhouette of the landscape and the beautiful sort of coloration of the sky itself. So all of these works really find a balance between the man-made and the environment. They inject discovery, pace of change, they deal with pure contemplative spaces, and simplicity of intent. And really all of that is achieved through a distillation of thought, distillation of the concept, distillation of the site, to really its sort of core. Nature ultimately is the original example of universal beauty. I seek to use the methodologies, colors, transformations, scale, light, and sublime beauty of nature as both inspiration and material itself in order to create artwork that taps into a greater sense of unity within and amongst all of us. Unity with nature, with one another, with one's core life experience. At the root of all of us, I believe, is a desire for all of us to be more bonded together as human beings. A shared experience at the scale of these installations within the scale of nature is a step forward in that direction. Thank you. Thank you.